Hi, my name is Dr. Jason Lee, practicing clinical immunology and allergy. The purpose of this app is to train the healthcare professional to know and understand the fundamental immunologic concepts behind allergic asthma. Lecture 1, we begin with an understanding and review of the critical concepts in immunology. Without further ado, let's begin. The immune system can be broadly categorized into conceptual spheres consisting of innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Our bodies are literally surrounded by a universe of antigens, things that can potentially harm us or do nothing. The innate immune system is sort of like the first line defenders. They are hardwired into our DNA and we've evolved over many, many years to develop this mechanism. The adaptive immune system are the fine-tuned defenders of the immune system. They are also responsible for figuring out friend from foe. Now, we like to conceptualize these things as separate arms of the immune system. However, I do want to emphasize that this is a simplification, and these elements work in tandem with one another to coordinate an effective immune response. The cells that comprise the innate immune system are antigen-presenting cells, such as dendritic cells in the lung, macrophages, mast cells, basophils, eosinophils. Adaptive immunity largely consists of different T cells, B cells, and some NK cells, called natural killer cells. Once an antigen breaks through an epithelial barrier, your antigen-presenting cells can uptake it, it is presented into the immune system. First, the antigen is processed and presented to a T cell. This T cell is considered naive. That naive T cell then tries to differentiate and figure out exactly what it's dealing with. If it happens to think it's bacteria or something intracellular, bacteria or virus, it will mount Th1 response. If it thinks the pathogen is an extracellular organism, it will mount a Th2 response. Now, what regulates both this axis is something called the T regulatory cell. You can think of this as the master regulator. Now, you might think the immune system needs to act faster and more aggressively without waiting for all this to occur, and you would be absolutely correct. Receptors called toll-like receptors exist on most antigen-presenting cells. These allow for target recognition and immediate activation of contents of the innate immune system. In addition to this, eosinophils, mast cells, and basophils are coated with a receptor called fc epsilon r one This receptor allows those cells to bind to various antibodies, and in particular, IgE antibody subtype. Once that cell sees a pathogen that antibody recognizes, it can fire off immediately, allowing you to mount a more vigorous response on the second and third attacks. When a cell is originally attacked, however, for the first time, it does not have these particular specific antibodies, and as such will have to rely on things like toll-like receptors. Most cells of the innate immune system also have complement receptors. Complements play another big role in acting as a bridge between innate and adaptive immunity. In addition to this, other proteins float around in the immune system called collectins and defensins. All of these contribute to the inflammatory cascade that occurs to effectively neutralize infection. Now, the adaptive immune system is largely composed of T and B cells, as we spoke about. So, the B cell, its main function, you can think of, is to produce antibodies. To produce antibodies, it has to first become activated by a T cell and turn into a plasma cell. The antibodies generated by the B cell are very specific, fine-tuned, and always constantly changing. This is a process called affinity maturation, where somatic hypermutation, actual DNA changes occurring to create more fine-tuned antibody. As such, when you first deal with an infection, the antibodies are okay. However, when you subsequently encounter that same organism, not only do you have antibodies ready to go, they're of higher affinity and quality. The T cell seems to be a very critical part in all this. It determines what type of antibody gets created, whether it be an IgM, A, D, E, or G. The IgG antibody is largely responsible for fighting most infections and gets dispersed through a variety of tissues and most tissues in your body. The IgE antibody is geared toward helping you fight infections from parasites. IgA antibodies effectively play a role in mucosal immunity, such as the sinuses, respiratory epithelium, and GI tract. IgD antibodies are thought to play a regulatory role in various immune reactions. 
Now the T cell also has its own receptor called the T cell receptor. This is largely responsible for recognizing antigen presented by the antigen presenting cell, such as a dendritic cell. Now, the other cells that I mentioned, such as the mast cell, eosinophil, and basophil, can also act as antigen presenting cells. And I want to emphasize that any nucleated cell in your body can act as an antigen presenting cell. Every nucleated cell in your body contains MHC class 1, which is the molecule required to present antigen to your immune cells. A professional antigen presenting cell will contain both MHC class 1 and 2. A T cell will select an MHC class 1 and Th1 corresponding response if it feels that the infection is mainly limited to inside cells. Conversely, an MHC class 2 response will be selected by the T cell and a subsequent Th2 response if it feels the pathogen is mainly extracellular. The T cell can further differentiate into CD4 and CD8. Now the Th1 and Th2 cells I talked about are both part of the CD4 cell. CD4 cells are called helper T cells. These largely coordinate the reaction and organize the immune system. There are Treg subsets of CD4 cells. Similarly, CD8 cells also have a Treg version. A CD8 cell is called a killer T cell because this is largely responsible for going around and killing pathogens either by inducing apoptosis or other mechanisms. That is all for this lecture.